Good morning and welcome to Bold Faith Bible. Today we have the question that's continuing. How can we have faith that is uh, without works? Is it possible? Can we do that? We keep getting the answer no, but we're going to be looking at two very different people. We're going to talk about Abraham or Abram, who is the father of the uh, Jewish nation, the father of Israel. And on top of that, we're going to look at har uh, a harlot. Uh, we're going to look at Rahab. She uh, was like what we would consider the opposite of righteous. So we have these extremes and see how faith was essential to them being righteous before God. So much to cover today. We're going to cover a big chunk of uh, scripture from verses 20 through 26 in chapter 2. So get ready to move across some territory. Before we begin, let's start with a word of prayer and a time of confession. Let's pray. Lord God, we just lift up our hearts to you and ask you to teach us, teach us your word. Help us to walk with you and to, to know you better. Lord, help us to understand your ways and what is pleasing to you, that we may focus in on the major things and not get sidetracked by the minor uh, details. Lord, we are so prone to get fixated on small things that that uh, really aren't core to what you want from us. And Lord, apart from things that are good but secondary, Lord, we get so distracted by things that we ought not to as well. So Lord, we lift up our sins and our failings to you now in this time of confession. Lord, we pray with repentance. We seek your forgiveness. And in Christ, who suffered and died upon the cross for our sins, we find the redemption of our sins. Lord, we pray that you would help us to walk in this way that you have set before us. Lord, we pray these things in Jesus' powerful name. Amen. Well, so great to have you all with us this morning. Uh, we are going to be diving into James chapter 2, the last section here, verses 20 through 26. And you say, Steve, how are you going to cover six verses? Are we going to be here all day? And you've already looked at the counter on there, and you can see that that is not the case. I can't see the counter yet, but uh, let's dive on in here. I'm pushing the wrong buttons. That's why it's not working. So just for context, let's read some even more verses. This is from yesterday's. Um, but someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without works and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that God is one, good, but even the demons believe and they shudder. So that leads us into here today. Uh He's not going to say brothers and sisters today. He's going to say senseless person. So uh, let's not be the senseless people that actually hold to this type of false belief. Verse 20, senseless person, are you willing to learn that faith without works is useless? Wasn't Abraham our father justified by works in offering Isaac his son on the altar? Now hold on. Hold on. Keep keep with us. Uh, some of those words may kind of rub you a little wrong, right? Um, but uh, let's keep going. You see that faith was active together with his works, and by works, faith was made complete. And the scripture was fulfilled that says Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness, and he was called God's friend. You see that a person is justified by works, not by faith alone. All right there, some of you are going, wait, this is in the Bible? Because we believe in faith alone, right? Uh, grace alone, by faith alone. In the same way, 
wasn't Rahab, the prostitute, also justified by works in receiving the messengers, sending them out by a different route? For just as the body without the spirit is dead, so also faith without works is dead. So you can see all of this is just one topic here. We have two people here. Let's uh, use that for that. We have Abraham. It's not supposed to be red, but it is red. We have Abraham, and then we have Rahab, right? So we have this contrast. Abraham, this righteous guy who seemed to do good stuff pretty much all his life. Now we know where he failed sometimes. We know a couple of his stumbles, his failures to believe God in Egypt. We, uh, we, we see his failure to believe when he took Hagar and tried to bring about God's promise uh, through Hagar. So not the greatest perfect guy, but I mean, generally speaking, we see him as, as a righteous man who, who followed God. But then we have Rahab, who generally speaking was not righteous. Uh, she was a prostitute, right? That's generally what we consider to be not good. I mean, if someone walks like that into your church, um, hopefully your church responds with grace and mercy and and love and acceptance. But let's be honest, uh, we'd have to we'd have to make sure that they stay away from certain people because those people may not be able to contain themselves because they have this perspective on this works that pleases God and that anyone who who doesn't do all the right stuff is, is somehow displeasing to God. And they may sh share that with them face to face. That is not what this passage is about because clearly we're talking about Rahab being a person of faith who is justified by works. So we must be very careful with what we say here to not oversay anything and not to undersay anything. So what we're saying here very clearly is that you must have faith and works. Faith that doesn't have works isn't real faith. Real faith alone is enough to save us. But real faith always has works. So there's different ways of looking at this, but it's really all saying the same thing. You can't earn your salvation. You cannot do enough to balance the scales. But what you can do is works that are motivated by faith. Faith that works or works that are done by faith. That's what we're talking about here. And so James uh, lays this out, that it is, it is by works here, right? And he's looking at it saying, if, the wor if good works are there that are motivated by faith, then that's what saves them. See, faith active together with his works not justified by works alone, but not, not just wishful thinking alone either. And so we see his faith by the things he did. And so when we have people who claim to be Christians, who just say that they're Christians, and then their lives do not change. Are they truly Christians? Are they righteous before God? Well, all they need is faith, but if they don't have the works, is it really faith? Um, so by works, the faith was made complete. Okay. You can say, I believe God. But until you trust God, you don't actually believe God. You must make a willful choice to obey him in faith, right? So there's different ways of looking at it, but it's the same thing. Some would say, well, if you have true works, well, then there is faith there. Others would say, if you have true faith, well, then there are works there. Right. 
But either way that you approach it, we can't have a non-working faith and we can't have works without faith. And we've seen both of those, right? We've seen the wishy-washy person who, who never actually does anything with their faith. And it's just useless to them and it's useless to everybody around them. We've also seen the people that are all about doing the things, but there's no heart in them. They don't have faith. They are just trying to earn God's favor. So what do we see here? Let's not be senseless people, right? Don't be a senseless person. Don't be a person who can't see. Don't be a person who just can't get it through their thick skull, right? None, none of us are going to be there, right? At least by the end of this lesson, right? We are not going to be these people. We're not going to be senseless people. We're going to avoid this misunderstanding, this excess, whether it is faithless works or workless faith. So Abraham was justified by works in offering Isaac. Yikes. This is another one that we might have trouble with. Offering Isaac, his son, on the altar. He was ready to kill his son because God commanded it. Or he thought, thought God commanded it, right? God stops him. But that was an awful rough thing. I and mean, if you say, I think God wants me to sacrifice my son. I, well, first off, if you're my parents listening, uh, don't do that unless you sacrifice your firstborn son, which then, okay, if you, if you need to do that, that's my brother, right? Um, we, we would say, no, biblically, God would not ask you to do that. God clearly says in his law that we have in his Bible that we have in our hands that we're looking at right now, all right, all over here, don't do that. God won't ask you that. But Abraham didn't have the Bible, right? Abraham was just hearing directly from God, and uh, he didn't know that this was against God's will to sacrifice his son. He suspected it. He had the promise that through Isaac, the promise would come. So he believed that, uh, uh, we saw in Hebrews, that Abraham believed that God would raise Isaac from the dead, which um, he was going to sacrifice him, and he believed that God would raise him from the dead so that this promise could be fulfilled. But this is what he did. Now let's go down and look at Rahab. Rahab the prostitute, she received the messengers and then she sent them out by a different route, right? Notice it doesn't say here that she was justified by lying. She did lie to cover up their, their escape. But she warned them. She hid them. Both commendable acts of faith. She chose to betray her city and be aligned with the people of God. And this was the faith that is commended here, not the lying, right? Lying is always wrong. Now, in, a, in, Rahab's, uh, in Rahab's life, uh, she did not yet know the law of God. And she thought what she was doing was right. And so while it was sin, there was faith in the sin. <laughs> Does that, does that twist your mind up into circles? Faith, moving through righteous acts, but in some weird, twisted ways, faith moving through sin. If you believe something is right, and you do it in faith and ignorance, you are exhibiting faith, which is pleasing to God. But your sin is not pleasing to God. How does that work? <laughs> and believe me, I don't know. You look at Rahab and you're just like, I can't believe she did that. I mean, like, 
shouldn't she have done, gone all the way and just done everything right? And yet we see so many Bible characters who mix a little bit of wrongdoing in with their faith, and it's just, ugh. We see, um, we see the judge that um, uh, he, he sacrificed his daughter by faith. Ugh. That's awful. That's just, I, I can't even express how wrong and yuck that is. But yet he, in a twisted way, thought he was pleasing to God and that God demanded it of him or something. And so it was a grievous sin, but in a weird, twisted way, he did it in faith. He shouldn't have done it. He should have, by faith, um, didn't, done something, okay? Done something else that was not murder, right? And so we have, we have throughout the Bible, we see people doing these just wrong things. And, and that should not be in any way a, 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 a recommendation to do something wrong, because I'm doing it by faith. No. If you know it's wrong, then it's wrong. But we also see this. If we seek to do what's right, if we're doing the best that we can to, to respond by faith to the promises of God, there is grace. There is grace there. Because we are, we are saved by faith, moving through works. <laughs> Hopefully they're good works. Um, but faith that results in action, that, that costs us something. Faith that doesn't cost us anything is dead, right? I have another color here. So Abraham offered his son uh, Isaac on the altar. And it says here, Abraham believed God. See, this is the important part here. Abraham believed God. But we see uh, basically implied here that Rahab believed. She was justified by works, but, but she believed. It was the faith there. And it was credited to him as righteousness. Now, this is a quotation from Genesis here. Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. So James isn't making this up. It's in the text. And it says that later, he was called God's friend. Not because he did everything right, not because he didn't sin, but because Abraham believed God. That was why it was credited to him as righteousness. So let's get practical. How do we respond by faith? Well, read the Bible. Seize upon the promises. And do the things that we see commanded in Scripture. If you believe the promises of God, you will do the commandments of God. Okay? We don't have to, like Abraham, wonder what the will of God is. We have a book that tells us the will of God. You can tell me about your pizza-induced feelings and your pizza-induced dreams and voices that you heard. Those are not stable, secure things. I don't care if you hear a voice that tells you to do something. If it contradicts Scripture, it is not God. It may be a demon. It may be your imagination. I don't know. We don't need to determine that. What we do need to know is that it wasn't God. When God speaks, it is fully in alignment with Scripture. God doesn't change. God today is not different than the God who wrote the Bible. God who wrote the Old Testament, it's the same as today. God who wrote Old Testament is the same as the New Testament. God doesn't change. And so if God says something to you, if a voice says something to you, it's not God if it contradicts Scripture. So we take Scripture to find the promises of God. We know these are true. And then we must act on them by stepping out in obedience 
when there's a promise of God, there's also a command of God, right? When there's a promise of God, we have we come to face the issue of, do I believe that this is true or not? And if it's true, it's going to demand some kind of response from us. When you heard the gospel for the first time, or when you heard the gospel for the time that you accepted it, you were provoked to take a step to do something about it. Jesus died for your sins so that if you believe in him and repent of your sins, you will be saved. Here's the truth. Now here's the response. Believe in him and repent. Faith moves you to repent. True faith will always result in repentance. Fake faith doesn't move you to repentance. If the gospel you heard was that God accepts you just the way that you are, uh, th that's partially true, but it's not the whole truth. That's part of the gospel, but because it's only a part of the gospel, it's kind of a false gospel. If you just, okay, well, I believe that God saves me. Thank you, Jesus. God calls you to repentance. Go and sin no more, as Jesus said. So you need to set out having died to your sin, died to yourself. What does that look like? Well, what do you know that you ought to do? Do it. It's in that repentance. The I wouldn't have done that before, but now I'm going to do it. That's motivated, hopefully, by faith. Now, if it's motivated by pride or greed, you know, if I do this, God will do this for me. That's motivated by greed, not faith, right? If you do it in order to be pleasing to God, you do it in response to his salvation. If you do it because you believe that he has truly transformed you, and now you're going to be this person that God has called you to be, that's faith. So much in this passage. There's so much good stuff here. For just as the body without the spirit is dead, so also faith without works is dead. So, do you have faith that works? Or are you missing one of them? Do you have faith that doesn't work? Do you have works that, do, that are not inspired by faith? Friend, we need both. Together, it says, Abraham believed God. And of course, his works, right, happened. And it was credited to him as righteousness. We don't stand in our own righteousness. We stand in his righteousness. That's the only way we're acceptable to God. It's the only way Abraham was acceptable to God. It's the only way Rahab was acceptable to God. Faith, that worked. Let me pray a prayer of blessing over you before you go. Dear Heavenly Father, we just, Lord, help us to wrap our minds around this. If there's anyone listening to this that does not have your Holy Spirit within them, that has not been saved, Lord, I pray that you would work in their hearts to, to, to allow them to understand this mystery, this truth. And Lord, I pray that they would step out in faith to obey that they would go back to the beginning of this video and pray the prayer again that we prayed at the beginning, where we confess our sins and we declared our hope and trust in Jesus Christ for salvation. For by that, we are saved. For each person who has walked with you so far, Lord, I pray, Lord, that we would not start chasing after or allowing ourselves to slip into an empty faith that, that says it believes but does not act or dead works that are not motivated by faith, not motivated by your promises. Lord, help us to walk in obedience in the one correct way, which is in the footsteps of Jesus. 
Lord, help us to walk that way, not any other. Lord, I pray you bless each person watching this video today. That they would be pleasing to you, that they'd be glorifying to you. We pray these things in Jesus' powerful name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time today, or if you want to know more about what it means to be saved, you can always email me directly at steve at thepoplarreport.com. Thepoplarreport.com. Uh, that email comes directly to me, um, and uh, it, it bypasses uh, a lot of the stuff I get from the other channel. And uh, if you have questions about that, don't, don't hesitate to reach out. And I will respond as best I can, as quickly as I can. But if you have some uh, extra time and you want to check out some other Bible studies, there's some right up here on the screen. I'll see you guys over there, or I'll see you guys later. God bless you all.